10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2... Drag Racing Fan Competition Plus, the place where you can believe what you read on the internet concerning drag racing power hour right now. As you come in, hit the like button, hit the share button. We're going to be talking drag racing post PRI, and I'm not the only one doing that. Along with me, my co-host, as usual, Slammin' Sam is on the power hour as well, wearing the PRI yo, yo, yo. hat. PRI, what did you think, Slammin' Sam? Man, PRI, um, it, it's like, I, I mean, I said it on the live show. If you watch that, if you could actually hear us, um, but PRI is its own beast. I mean, just from the people, from the things you get to see, um, from the, just the all in all atmosphere that's around there and, and the vibe that's in there. Everyone is, is happy to be there. Everyone is excited about what new products are coming out for the new year. So it's always cool to see that. It's always cool to, you know, get the insight on the new announcements uh, that are coming out and be a part of all that. But most importantly, Lee, and I think you see it already in the comments, is PRI 2022 is Dancing with Robots, man. Dancing with Robots. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Dance with, uh, Dance with the Robot. I did some research after seeing this eight foot techno transformer that someone they're everywhere wants, you know they're everywhere they're, they are everywhere and they're you can rent them like you can rent them for your party like i need the techno transformer at everything now i can call wes right now and say hey world series of pro mod finals like we need we need the dancing robot that does the two moves all night <laughs> yes, yes, for sure, for sure. That was cool. PRI was cool. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not been to a PRI, certainly it's for industry insiders. But get to know an insider and get yourself a pass. It is worth it. Everybody that should be there, well, they're there. And you get to talk with them and you get to chat with them. And it's wide open. What you see on Machine Tool Row that they bring in and they're working on what you see for us products for all different types of racing applications Ooh. throughout the world of motorsports. It's truly the performance racing industry trade show. Lee, when you talk about the machine row, I just want to talk about those robot welding, like, and it's kind of funny. I'm mentioning a robot again, but the welding arm, did you see that? That was going around. Like you put the, schematics of whatever it is that you're welding and you put the plate and it takes a 3d image of that and then it welds all the seams and like it goes back and checks its own weld i looked at that thing like two different times um there were a couple of guys that had like a uh, simulator re re uh, reaction tree that actually slams up um actually one of the guys is from north dakota and then he moved elsewhere um what else? I mean, just so many different like machine things that you wouldn't think of. The dynos were there, you know, the different manufacturers of parts, you know, TMS and all these different companies that manufacture things machine wise, the new, the newest and latest CNC machines that actually take the, the scrappings from it and they like condense them into, um, they condense them into, I don't even really know what you would call it, but you can still reuse that metal. Um, no to Andrew, I am not catching the PRI plague. I can promise you that. Uh, I can say, honestly, this is the first year. I don't think I've got it, but I don't want to jinx myself. So knock on the framing of this window that's sitting behind me. Um, I'm using a whole different setup. I'm in a completely different place than what I'm usually in. So yes um i so far have not caught the pri pledge and i i think that's due to the uh amount of dancing with robots and fireball shots that i had on yes, probably <laughs> so. 
Probably so from that. Now, PRI, concerning drag racing, I almost feel like the PRI show is drag race, leans drag racing more than any other motorsport that is there, I feel. And you this feel year, right at home. Year. Yeah, you feel this right year. at home as a drag racing fan, as a person of drag racing media or a drag racer. And the NHRA certainly uh, pulls out all the stops. And each day from 9 a.m. to the end of the show, it was interview after interview after interview after interview. They ran through the gauntlet of time of open mouth with so many characters that impact drag racing in the NHRA, not just the NHRA personality, such as a Ron Caps or an Erica Enders, but also people behind the scenes. I think of like Dennis Taylor with Taylor uh, Motorsports and the safety products that he produces and many other companies that are involved in NHRA drag racing. They had time on the stage as well. But Sam, and for everyone out there in the comments, what do you think was the big announcement, the biggest announcement that the NHRA had during PRI? Which one was the cherry on top? Are you are you asking me or are you asking the fans? I'm asking everybody. Um, I think there was two, and I don't think they're both NHRA. Uh, I think the first one, obviously, Alex Laughlin. Uh, you know, the news of Jim Dunn uh, racing, um, Jim Campbell being done, Alex Laughlin being the new driver. I actually found out that as soon as I landed from some inside sources. Um, but that that was huge. Um, and then just honestly, I kind of want to talk about that, Lee, because the like the the reaction of the people of Alex, you deserve better. Everybody's just getting in the seat. Like you guys are like, you guys said the same stuff about Alex, you know, when he jumped into a top fuel cars, he's just trying to get a seat. He's just trying to do that. Alex, take your time. You don't need to do this and that. But I mean, honestly, it's like, who are you to say anything about Jim, uh, Jim Dunn's racing and, and their program? Who are you to say anything about, oh, well, they haven't round this. They haven't done this. That car was competitive all year long. That car ran its personal best at the end of the season. So just because you may not like it, yes, you yes, you are entitled to your own opinion, but like who are you like who are you to tell him what to do with his life and how to spend his money? So that for me, I just I mean, someone that you know speaks to the Dunn family, uh, like I said, has an inside source within the Dunn family. Um, and if you know anything about them, I just keep your comments to yourself. Um, yeah. It is strange that you have a, you have a program that is one of the longest running programs out there in drag racing. You have it led by big Jim Dunn, who has done so much in this given us so many great moments and also established so many drivers that, yes, I agree. It was surprising to see the negativity that was out there. There was more of it than what I expected there to be out in from, from NHRA drag racing and from NHRA fans. I felt, I, I was surprised. I thought this move would be one that, was completely celebrated and there was negativity toward Alex. There was negativity toward uh, Jim Dunn racing. And, you know, for Alex, one thing he continues to do is he continues to find ways to make the relationships that he has ongoing relationships and profitable relationships and happy relationships. And he continues racing, give him credit. He figures out a way to stay in something and race at a high level. And for Alex, we may see someone that doesn't have a lot of wins, but when Alex wins, they are big wins. They're some of the biggest wins in the sport, no matter what class he is in. Jim Dunn racing. I think John 
and many others on that teams, I think there's going to be an uptick in their performance. I think that that even this move is something that we're going to see from them, and they're going to push just a little bit harder to be a quicker and faster car and be that much more competitive. You can never count out Jim Dunn Racing. They're going to keep all the big cars honest, and they have in round ones in the past taken out the likes of Matt Hagen and the likes of Robert Height. And I, I – think they are a team that is poised to do more. Also, Sam, we got the information that concerning Jana, even though people couldn't hear it because we were having the technical difficulties, that there certainly is the thought that she is to be afforded, availed the opportunity to take a crack at nitro methane funny car racing one day. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, you know, that was that whole technical difficulties. I mean, that sucks, uh, you know, have those, but trying something new at a, at a show, but you know, we, we discussed all that and they just think, you know, with her nursing career right now and everything she's got going, they wanted to focus on her career and she's just going to take the proper steps. And I mean, that's what you need to do. And uh, with the whole situation, like you said, I mean, I'm kind of reading this comment. DRC says it good too. I mean, I understand that people think that it may not be a championship, um, may not be a championship seat, but honestly, no seat right away is a championship seat. I mean, if if you look at the seat of Ron Caps this year, at the beginning of the year, you wouldn't have said it was a championship seat, but it just takes time and it takes, you know, it 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 is it's about how hungry you are. We hear it all the time. <clears throat> it's about how hungry you are. And if you want it bad enough, and if you're studying and someone that's coming in, you know, he's driven pro stock, he's driven top fuel. So, I mean, he's, he's got the time underneath his belt. I mean, he's driven pro mod, he's driven outlaw stuff. I mean, the guy has driven a handful of stuff. So to say, you know, the seat, I mean, or, or blame it on this or that, you know, maybe it just wasn't the right fit at the time for um, the way that, you know, the Dunn's car needed to be driven. And, and that's, you know, not throwing anything at a tuner, nor is that throwing anything at Campbell. It's just, you hear it all the time. You have to be in tune with the car. You have to be one with the car and maybe just the younger, you know, atmosphere and the younger vibe that Alex can bring to it. Big sponsors like Havlon and, and power built tools that he's bringing along with him. I mean, the sky is the limit and, and any seat, any car out there on the property at any given Sunday is capable of making it a championship car that day. And, you know, on Alex's abilities, you said handful, I say two handfuls of his driving experience, top fuel, pro stock, a fuel, pro mod, mountain motor pro stock as well at an NHRA event nonetheless, in an Elijah Morton car. And beyond uh, that, you said you mentioned the no prep, whether it's uh, an outlaw pro mod racing as well. And you have his background elsewhere in motorsports, as far as yeah, off-roading, tractor pulling, karting. I mean, the man is steeped in motorsports and has competed at a high level in all of them. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does in a funny car. And when will we see... When will we see Travis Pastrana in a funny car now? Oh, it's it's bound to happen. I mean, if you watched any of the Travis, you were actually there, but if you watched any of the Travis Pastrana interviews and stuff that he did, he's he is hooked on Nitro. I mean, he've even he's even said it with Scott. He's talked to Scott about it, um, about you know taking a crack at it in a national event. And I mean, the guy the guy is just gearhead. I mean, he loves motorsports. He loves driving fast and taking chances, like I always say. And that's what it's about. It's just finding your niche. And, you know, when you have that itch to do it, you have it. I can I can honestly say in the last five years, I have looked at my car and said, mm, yeah, whatever. I walked around that show after our show Saturday. I mean, Friday. Sorry. No, Thursday. Um, after our show Thursday, I walked around that PRI show and I looked at some stuff. And I looked at different things and I said, you know what? I talked to a couple of vendors that I use for parts and different things. And 
we chat, you know, we chatted about things. Um, so I wear both hats when I go to that show. I am a media person and I'm, you know, looking at new parts that are coming out for uh, my other business. But I I sat there and I got the itch there. There was just something about the aura and the atmosphere that was there between the media people, between the drivers and, and crew chiefs that were walking around there. Uh, you know, when we did our show both days, we had a lot of people interacting, coming through, asking questions at Redline, Oil. I mean, just just the atmosphere really put an itch to get back and race. And and I think, honestly, you're going to see some people that you may have counted out that have made some deals that are going to come out swinging. And ready or not, here they come. And Did that's just answer? the first thing that we talked about. Because I have two, one that was not in HRA and one that was. So, yeah. To answer Andrew, your question, yes, I think Alex will help take things to the next level. And I think the Duns are ready to go to the next level. I think that's why this happened. I, I don't think the status quo of what Jim Dunn Racing has been in the past is what we're going to see in 2023. I, it may be gradual, but I think you're going to see performance step up. I think you're going to see branding step up and that now it's not to say that you know it's going to be interesting over the year how all the partnerships come into place because john dunn has been no slouch in the marketing department himself no. he's the one who actually has designed the wraps in the past and and procured sponsors so uh, they do a fabulous job in the marketing ranks and have always had some great looking funny cars no matter what wrap it is from the moon eyes uh, cars to the blaze cars they have always looked good i'm going to say for nhra my outlook of top announcement is an individual that i don't think many people expected to have a major announcement we expect major announcements from an erica enders from a ron caps from a Tony Schumacher, those type of calibers of individuals. But Buddy Hole announces a new primary sponsorship with Methanol Moonshine, a brand that has ties to Australia and Iowa of our country. And that is good to see a new name within NHRA Drag Racing, I think, connecting with a very marketable driver in Buddy Hole. So good to see an independent getting some 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 more help getting some more partners to go out there and be that much more competitive good to see oh yeah i mean that um you know that that was something else i was going to talk about is just buddy hall you know and that the whole shirts and everything i've already ordered a shirt uh by the way because those look badass and i think that shirt should be on my wall i'm not wearing it um but I, I think that that was huge for him. Uh, you know, congratulations to Buddy. And we kind of talked about things, and he said he couldn't say, but it was going to be big news. But I can't say I won't be drinking any of that. Like, no. Um, no, I, I'm, mm, call me what you want. Last time I did that, I, I swear to you, I was like sick for like four days after that. Cause I didn't, you know, everyone says they have good moonshine, but I can tell you, if it comes in a plastic bottle, like a gallon plastic, like, water bottle don't drink it like seriously don't just don't yeah don't drink that drink actually the methanol moonshine that is produced no in Iowa. none 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 of it no i never again once and done i tried it that's just like i was you know what lee i can't say i know i was supposed to try veggie mate or whatever veggie mate or whatever that was Rob, on Friday. Rob didn't come by. i'm glad he didn't because that would have been good <laughs> That would not I, have I have good. got to go to the shop. I've got to go to the shop. His shop is in Mooresville, North Carolina. I've got to go to the shop, and I've got to get on, on camera and try Vegemite. Uh, yeah, because he was talking to us about it at the uh, DI party, and like yes. people were trying to describe it. But I'm just glad he didn't. Like that. Uh, so I was bad. hoping. I was hoping. Maybe Rob had a few too many, and wasn't wasn't moving uh, that the well very well the next day. Uh, so Rob, let us know you're okay. I didn't see you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see him either. So. Um, but yeah, so my second one was the big announcement from Drag Illustrated saying that CBS Sports is going to be covering the World Series of Pro Mod. Uh, that's just hu that's huge and, in general. Go ahead. And with, with a standby 
tried and true drag racing brand in Masters Entertainment Group, like Ted Jones, legend himself, working that out in mid CB. I mean, good all all the way around. Oh yeah. Um, again, I kind of knew something about that, uh, um, but couldn't spill the beans. Um, but you know, it, it's one of those things that that elevates uh, that elevates the sport. Like, even though that's an independent thing, uh, that's going to be a show that you can go back and watch. You know, that's going to be something on CBS that you can you can tape. You know, it's going to be a full broadcasted show development commercials everything and just for drag racing you know to have its own platform and and to have a tie where we have someone that is interested in saying hey you know what we need drag racing on our tv the fact that cbs is looking at mo at the drag racing world and motorsports and saying you know what um like this is this is it so uh really cool to see I mean, really cool um, to deal with uh, and, and just be a part of, you know, is it it's really cool to know that people are looking at drag racing. Drag racing has caught people's eyes from coming in to the realms of being, you know, let in to football games or after football games and NASCAR and having having this publicity behind us. We're moving in the right direction. And and it takes moments like we have at PRI where you know, a guy can stand next to, you know, I have pictures with Erica Enders, Chase Freeman. I have pictures with you. I have pictures with um, with Lizzie Musi, um, you know, Kai Kelly. I saw him, Mike Murillo, uh, got the chance to speak with him uh, and, and all these different names, you know, John Montecavo. I'm trying to think of everyone that we kind of interacted, Chad Green, that we inter interacted with, uh, Leah Pruitt. I had a few conversations, Leah Pruitt Stewart to get that right um had a few conversations with her so just to be able like i said is to move that needle forward in drag racing is is always huge and shout outs to pri shout outs to sema show uh shout outs to the rpm act of everyone that's supporting that and that's moving forward with that that's you know letting us know that they care about the motorsports industry and without the people like that that care about motorsports and and want motorsports to continue lead like we're doing, you know, we, if we don't care, we're doing a disservice to our sport and to everyone that's involved. Mikey comments. I agree with him. You agree with him. Agree with him. The CBS thing is a big deal. I think it's a big deal because, well, one, I can remember watching CBS sports and they do cover a lot of motorsports on CBS sports, but it is predominantly oval and dirt in particular and didn't have much, if at all, any drag racing representation. So to have pro mod drag racing for $100,000 on a primetime stage, that is big. And to have those characters at the forefront and people see what drag racing is and to uh, hear from the people who drive those cars, that is certainly going to be a good thing. I also like, though, that there are still going to be streaming partners and there's still going to be other media there. It's not a, oh, we got the big fish and the other fishers are got to get out of the pond now. No, everybody's going to be swimming along to push the product forward. And I think that's what we need in drag racing all around. However, someone can cover, it's worth them covering and get the news out there and push the narrative forward on how good drag racing is. Oh, 100%. Um, and, you know, that's something that Wes Buck and the Joel Drag Illustrated team do very well is, you know, just trying to be innovative, trying to help and grow the sport in any way they can. And, and you know, you'll hear Wes say it uh, mostly at anything that Wes Buck does or the drag. It's the biggest and it's the richest pro mod race in the world. Uh, which, I mean, rightfully so right now it is. So it's pushing the needle forward. Lee, I can't say the biggest moment for us, and many people probably couldn't hear it, and I'm going to take responsibility for that. Um, but, dude, we got to sit down. The biggest moment, PRI, we got to sit down with Scotty, the you-know-what cannon. Like, what? Like, 
Yes. Hey, we're gonna, we're gonna have to redo that. We're hey, for sure gonna have to redo that. For sure, we're gonna have to redo that. I have not went to hear how the audio was during that time. I know the first part of that show there was no audio. Then audio came in, and we kept working on it, massaging it, and got it right. Sorry, folks, for the technical difficulties. It does happen, especially when you're trying to do something you haven't done at uh, a live venue. And by the way, again, thank you, Redline Oil, for giving us a place to chat with so many. Uh, people in drag racing, John Dunn, Jonna Dunn, Dustin Davis, Justin Ashley, Josh Hart, Larry Dixon. But I, I would have to say, and I don't think anybody would mind me saying it out of all that I said, Scotty Cannon does top the list. Thank you, Bobby Bennett, his connections, who he knows. We had Scotty Cannon on a drag racing show for the first time in no telling how long that man has, like, where has he been? And we were able to talk with him. Big moment for me. I was a Scotty Cannon fan living in the upstate of South Carolina. You had to be a Scotty Cannon fan. So cool to hear that he's ready to get back in something. He's, he's willing ready to, to do anything. He's ready to open a can of whoop ass. Let's be honest. I mean, he didn't say it, but that's pretty much the feeling that I got when he's like, I'm sitting there trying to tweak with wires and do this. And I'm listening to you guys go back and forth and I'm sitting there like taking it in. Like, man, I'm doing this because Scotty cannons on and like people need to hear what he's saying. And then he just kept going back to you. I'm a drag racer. I am, you know, I am who I am. And it's just, it's refreshing to know that these men and women that get out of the sport, miss the sport so much that they're like, you know what, well, I would kick somebody through a wall to get that spot in that car if I have the chance. So, right. I mean, I kind of got yeah. from Scotty. He's like, my back is right. My health is right. All of that is figured out. And I may not be as good as I once was, but I sure can be good once as I ever was. <laughs> yeah, I situation. mean, they should put me back in something. Hey, hey, coach, I got my glasses in the back. You tell me when to go put those on, and it's game time. For sure. So. I think that is the case. I think that is the case. Look, PRI, it was an outstanding show, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not been, it needs to be on your calendar to take the trip up to Indy and enjoy the performance racing industry trade show. 100%. Um, yeah, I mean – the reset button, I said it a lot during the show, the reset button has been pushed. We ended the 2022 20, race season, and we are officially ticking down the days until the 2021. So this little gap is is relax and, you know, rejuvenate, but it's balls to the walls. I mean, every, you know, guys and girls are in the shop. Uh, our guest, our first guest that's going to come on, he's going to uh, talk to you about that. But, I mean it's it's grind time it's still it's still a little bit of silly season but it's grind time and everyone's ready to go so um like i said i mean i'm excited to see what is next i'm excited to see what's going to happen and uh where where we go from here lee who knows i don't know i don't know andrew technically it's not open to the public but you can figure a pass out and connect with somebody and i might need a cameraman next year so come on we'll figure something out we'll figure something out oh for sure um like you said it's not but it kind of is if you know somebody or can ask a question that to somebody that has a heartbeat with inside the motorsports industry i'm pretty sure you can uh obtain obtain yeah pass well Sam, we have got a transition. We got Tony Schumacher in the uh, green room. Who's who? Yeah, who, who, yeah, who. Who? Yeah. Who's that guy? Yeah, right, right. So we are going to transition. The, that's the best looking uh, top fuel driver in the NHRA, right? Uh, he's certainly up there. I will say this. He has got the most intense like helmet shot with his eyes oh, and the helmets blue, on. So deadly. Yes. so deadly yeah like you look at that shot and you're like dude i don't i don't know if you know when you always see that guy when you pull up to the light and you right. look over and if all you could see if somebody could like do a window tint where it's just like yeah him and the rock next to each other looking at you i don't know what would be scarier 
Yeah. I mean, I could see, like, switch it out with a Spartan helmet. It's like, we are Sparta. You know, except he's like, I am Tony. <laughs> I Oh, dude, we need a shirt that says that. Him just rocked out six pack with the gladiator mask and this is Spartus. Or this is Sarge. That's what it needs to say. Could be. Right Could be. there. Okay. There we're, you go. We're working out branding right now. We're working out branding right now. But look, before we transition, you know, we've got Peak on board. They're sponsoring us. And we're definitely glad to have Peak on board. And we could say, hey, what was the Peak announcement? But I think after PRI, there was an announcement made today. And the Peak performers is going to be Coletta Motorsports. Dude, they, they donated... $75,000, which equated to 750,000 meals to Feeding America yeah. with their program that they had in the last like quarter of the season with Doug and Sean and JR turning on wind lights. 750,000 meals. That is awesome. That is some yeah. peak performance in drag racing to the community. That is cool to see. 100 percent and like you said each week we'll be doing our peak moment or our peak you know announcement and for sure that that hands down i mean it, like you said it it's that that's something that you see that drag racing is being you know it just wants to give back to the people that are in our community to the less fortunate and and that's what it's all about i mean many people forget about that during the, this holiday season where you know it's supposed to be so joyful and triumphant but there's many people that, you know, they're, they're, you know, going through whatever it may be. They're living paycheck to paycheck. They are, um, you know, dealing with whatever circumstances. And so, you know, just take a minute to, to really process that 750,000 meals to people across, you know, everywhere that are, are able now to, to be provided that meal, because you never know, you know, what your next door neighbor or the person down the street may be going through. Definitely peak performance. The peak commercial upcoming word for them, but also we want to thank Weldon High Performance and High Performance Pumps. And after that commercial, we've got up on the Competition Plus Power Hour, Tony Schumacher and Mike Neff just came into the green room after the break. If you want to take your vehicle's performance to new heights, you got to give it peak. Like our original equipment technology, antifreeze and coolant. Our formulas match the vehicle manufacturer's technology requirements so that we have the perfect match for every vehicle. That's one reason why Peak is among the fastest growing brands of coolant in America. We work harder to earn the trust of people like you every day. Schumacher and Mike Neff, welcome to the Competition Plus Power Hour. Thank you, Mike. I haven't, I have, I have not got to talk to you at the drag strip. I've seen you a lot in testing and in the pits and all of that. And the first moment when I'm like, okay, that's who Mike Neff is. It's Atlanta, Georgia, Friday qualifying. You're in that red Mustang, and it was like one of your first big boomers ever. When I hear Mike Neff, that's what I think about. <laughs> yeah, I. I remember that. Um, yeah, that was actually probably my one and only time that I blew up and caught on fire, fortunately. But ironically enough, it was against Gary Selzy, who I raced with for a lot of years. So, um, you know, luckily, I, he didn't run into me. I couldn't see where I was going and all the oil on my visor and smoke and it was a, definitely an experience, but fortunately, I got over into his lane, and he stopped, and you know, it was pretty minimal damage, all things considered. Well, so, Tony, going to you, you know, I mentioned here the, uh, sorry, I have myself on mute, the visor shot that we were talking about. I mean, do, do you agree that that is the most fierce 
look in in HRE drag racing is <laughs> is, you, is your right this this right here. I'll tell you a story, Big Daddy Don Garlic. When he when you ask him who he wants to drive a car, he always says Schumacher. He goes, "You ever look in his visor? He, he thinks I'm I'm from outer space. I, I'm pretty sure because he says, you know, look at those eyes." And I go, "Matt, you ever think I'm just focused, or maybe I'm just confused? These cars are hard to drive, right, Zip?" Yeah, they can be. <laughs> it's a handful. It's a great shot. I I like looking at my eye shots. Um, I think I do look intense in them, but. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of people you look in there. You're, you're talking about, we're getting buckled in to go 330 miles an hour. We're, we're not only focused on what we have to do, but we have another car next to us or in Charlotte and Vegas, we might have three. We're about to do a job that in three seconds going to dictate if we won or lost. So it's, it's an intense moment. I think, you know, if you look in, if you look inside someone's helmet, they look confused and scared, probably need to get out of a car. I think it's the time when you're at your peak focus, you know, once the car starts, you're doing repetition. You're doing what you've done, and and you're doing it. You know, trying to be a machine in there. But but those few minutes before, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty intense. And and I, it's not like you don't see them bend over to take a photo. So you're always giving them your coolest look, anyways. <laughs> For sure, of course, yeah. So so Mike, I have had like Elon Warner today. He's been texting back and forth. Oh, right, Tony's on the show, and John wasn't able to make it, and Zippy, Zippy's on too. And I'm like, who the heck is Zippy? And I'm figuring out, okay, it's got to be Mike because of the process of elimination. And Tony says, Zippy, where does Zippy come from? I got that nickname when I was a kid. My friends started calling me that and it just stuck. It's just one of those, one of those names. But um, yeah, everybody, you know, when I go home or a lot of my friends are pretty much, you know, I'd say probably half the people I know call me Zippy. So um, it's. It's just kind of a, you know, and I've had it for a long time, just kind of a weird, weird thing, but it's stuck. That's for sure. It's true, man. When, when the Maynards called me and said, we got Mike, we got Mike. And I said, what happened to Zippy? <laughs> <laughs> who, who the heck are you talking about? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and on that. Explain the history because there's history between you two. This 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 is something that yeah, in the modern day is is going to be worked out. But it's not like you two have not worked with each other in the past in some shape, form, or fashion. So Tony, if you would fill us in on what the past has been like. Yeah, we we raced uh, in 2018, the last year of the Army deal. Uh, we were together. We ended up number two. We were, geez, I think we were low ET the last half of the year. We were running good. Torrance was having an amazing year, and, and when I won the championship, we finished second. Uh, but then, we, you know, with the Army leaving, we just we couldn't put a deal together. We thought we had one, and we were going to stick together. But after months went by, my dad tried to keep it all together, and, and when we just didn't have a deal, he released it, and uh, he went right over, I think, with Tasca, and, you know, they've, they've been there for a long time. So we didn't have – we didn't get to close our, our end. We, we wanted to do this for a long time. Every year I'd come back out there and say, if we ever have an opportunity, we need to get back into that game. We had Phil Schuler on the, on the team too at the time, but we were just getting to where we were really running exceptionally well. We were going to be a, a car to, to be contended with. And, and I was excited, you know, and then, and then it falls apart. So I'm looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. Uh, we have a great group of guys coming on board new chassis, new parts, new pieces, and Skag Power Equipment, I don't think they're even ready for what they're going to get. You know, we had a great time last year. Everyone had a lot of fun, but this coming up year, you know, we'll have a little learning curve at the beginning, uh, getting back into a dragster for, for Mike and for the guys, but I don't think it's going to be that long. Phil's been with me for the second half of this year. Uh, Mike's tuned to Carbon 4, and, and uh we're just going to get after it. It's, I'm excited. My wife's excited. The whole team's excited. Manners are excited. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to getting out there. So, Mike, for you as a crew chief and a tuner of a car, uh, dip, you know, with that role, are is there any, how do you say this, any, like, I don't want to call it traditions. What is the word I'm looking for, Lee, here? Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> anyway, I, I I'm like literally drawing a blank right now. Is there any like super hey, there it is superstitions that you have that or rituals that you know that you 
have had in the past that you think that you still do to this day? Um, I wouldn't, um, I'm not real superstitious as far as you know, I got to put my left sock on first every morning or things like that. It's, you know, typically it's, you know, I mean, this is a new challenge. I mean, the, the dragster, I mean, I did it one year before with Tony when he talked about in 2018 and, um, you know, we were just kind of felt like we were figuring things out when that came, came to an end. But, um, I don't know. It's like, I just, I just try to keep it simple as I can. And, you know, it, it really all goes back to that, you know, to what you hear all the time is just go with your gut, you know, cause you've got a million thoughts going through your mind and I could, we could do this, I could do that. Or what about this? And you can kind of get yourself spun out. And if you just try to keep it simple, you know, just stick to the common sense, do things that have worked in the past, that kind of, that's kind of the approach I like to take it, you know, try to keep it as simple as I can and not, you know, make it harder than it has to be as far as that, you know, a lot of it goes because, you know, there's just a lot of decisions to make a lot of different moving parts. And, you know, the good news is that I've got a great team, John Schaefer, who's helped me for a long time. He came over with me and Phil Schuler's going to be around. We got some of the guys from our, previous team and um i'm really excited about the group we have so you know relying on those guys you know and that they're all going to do their job and all that's going to be taken care of you know i don't have to worry about that i just have to worry about the little details and decisions i have to make so i guess i would say just um just trying to keep it simple and and just kind of go with that first gut instinct and don't overthink it with saying gut instinct, don't overthink it. What are some empirical data points, if you will, as a tuner going from a funny car to a top field dragster that you're going to be looking at early on in testing to see what direction the car needs to go in with Tony to be a competitive car in NHRA Camping World Drag Racing? Um. The, the engine combinations are actually really close. The, like the compression, um, you know, the tune up, how much tune up it has, the, how fast you run the blower, you know, for certain conditions are actually really similar. Um, typically you can tune the dragster up a little bit more. It just seems to, re it's got more traction re requires a little bit more power it seems like but so from an engine standpoint power standpoint they're really similar um really the only difference there is you got the headers are different you have a shorter header on the the dragster and you know the injector is a lot taller but everything else pretty much engine wise is is pretty much identical the the tricky part between the two is the weight difference the dragster is lighter it has more traction it's and so it's that clutch application with the dragster you can start the clutch earlier start accelerating it earlier than you can with the funny car and um you know just trying to get get that balanced out right is is going to be you know the the key difference here and you know these all be new cars and you know yeah we did it before but that was you know four five years ago. So, you know, things change, track conditions change. So it's going to be a learning curve, but I'd say the, the most important thing, um, trickiest thing, I believe is just going to be trying to get that clutch set up and, and kind of get that in line and, and the power as well. I'm sure there'll be some tweaking here and there, but, uh, we plan on going testing here, um, the, end of February and make some runs and then we'll test right before, the race in Gainesville and hopefully um, we got, you know, something, you know, that we feel good about going into Gainesville. And I mean, that's what it takes. I mean, we've seen it last year, you know, the more testing you can get in, obviously the better, but for you, Tony, coming back, you know, we talked about this early in the year. What were you looking forward to? What were the, the small accomplishments that, you know, have, long-term effects but just over this year what do you think um were those those key moments for you that you hit uh that you know propelled you to the to the next accomplishment well obviously winning seattle was awesome because 
Uh, Phil Schuler had just come back and was kind of helping out, uh, going going rounds in in Brainerd. But really, it was I I started looking forward to this moment and getting out here. We were using Frankenstein cars. I mean, in a time they were great, but they were old. They were beat up. They were cut in half. Parts and pieces were were pretty old. And and uh, I was looking forward to getting established out there putting together a long contract with SCAG uh, where you could actually say, okay, now we can, we can hire the exact people that we like in our group. We can bring on all the parts and pieces that are necessary to go out and compete with someone like Brittany. I mean, they're running incredible numbers right now. We can, we can have the parts and pieces and people need it. I think the biggest accomplishment was putting those contracts together with, with a sponsor that's long-term looking forward to doing what they're doing. Me getting comfortable back in the car, but I, I, it was a weird car to drive. It, it just didn't do the same thing two runs in a row. So uh, for me, I, it wasn't something that was normal. But, you know, that's part of racing. I think if, if you watch the season go on, you didn't see me throwing helmets. You didn't see me cussing people out. You didn't see that. It was adversity. I've been through it before. And I think it's uh, one of the strengths that makes our car go out and, and stay together. It makes makes really good people want to come work on that car is because, uh, you're not going to win every race. You're not going to win every season. You're going to have those down ones, and uh, you got to figure it out. So we'll get after it now. We're going to figure it out. We got. I think we got the right parts, pieces, uh, two brand new chassis being built. I'm looking forward to getting going. Can't wait to test. Yeah, the only frustration I think I saw out of Tony all year was St. Louis, big oil down. He walks to the bottom of the tower, and it's like everybody get back in your cars. It's like every time I get out of my car. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I, I always, if you want to see a good oil down, just watch the car in front of me, man. I, I sit in, I sit in the car more times, you know, and, and it always seems to be the one time where I, I have an important run coming up. I got to be focused and there. I got to get back out of the car and chill out. It, you know, it's really intense, man. I wish everyone we've got a lot of viewers here. I wish everyone had a chance to, to uh, whether you're on a team or be sitting in that car at one point, you know, Zip knows, man. He sat there, and, and when you're sitting there and you're looking out of that car and, you're, and you're, the thought's going through your head and then you see a, a big fire and all down, you know, the you, NHRA and the safety safari is the best in the business. They're going to get it cleaned up. That is not going to be the problem. It's the amount of time. You get your heart rate to a spot where it's ready to race. You're pumped up. Your thoughts are there, and then you got to get out and chill, and, and then you got to get it built back up. So um, those are – you're right. That That's hard. And I always and, – and, and my fine this year. I got fined again. You know, those are the two things that I was really frustrated with. Um, I'm not really bothered by wheel stands or breaking cars or, or blowing stuff up. I, I'm bothered by uh, when I drive poorly, you know, if I do something bad, uh, that, that gets to me. But really, it was it was one of those years where I, I was out for three years. So to be able to get back in a car and make a full season worth of runs, um, disappointed in every way and where we finished. But, you know, uh, it's nice to be through it because I've had seasons like that before. I hope to never have them again, but but it's part of racing. There's a lot of great cars out there. Fantastic competition. If you're a fan right now, you're definitely getting your money's worth. Uh, you just don't know who's going to win a race. You can pretty much assume Brittany's going to run 338. That's a that's a known fact. Grubnik has got an excellent uh, Matt Savage. Those guys got a car that's running like like uh, nobody's business. But I think that you know we're going to have that car right right there with them. So. It's just a matter of time. You know, they, they've had a lot of experience together over the last couple of years, and we're going to be starting new. But but that's okay because we've worked together before. We've got a lot of knowledge in that camp and uh, and great parts and pieces. Lee, and he does talk about it. Uh, you know, he doesn't he doesn't mind the wheel stands or whatever. I talked to him there, and that was uh, Denver when he decided to, you know, launch the car off – in brain or i mean there in denver and then you know you talk about the fine and everything you sit through all these oil downs and everything but then you you know look at brainerd where you're strapped in the car before you even get to the start line and you know you guys are hot heaving through the pits which i totally understand safety safari has their rule but it's like if you want a guy to get there you know speak of that incident where you guys are trying to find wiring you know, issues and you strap into a car and, you know, you guys come around the corner there. If you've never been to Brainerd, you come around the corner and it slingshots you right up to the start line. Your team pulls the lever. You're coming up on the brakes and everybody's like, like, what's going on? But yeah. I couldn't believe it started. 
I mean, it, it hadn't yet. So it started, and I'm like, now what do I do? You know, did the burn, and, we end up, and then we ended up beating them. You know, and it was like we had a plan shut off at half track. We weren't going to go any further than that. But, you know, it was, it was surprising. But that being said, fine, okay, that's good. But would, would they rather me have shut off and had a single? Because I think the fans that pay money, they, they want to see a show. So pay the fine and take the discipline, but the fans got a good show out of it. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I think – you know, I, I was really happy that Josh Hart waited for us, obviously, because we went on one. But in return, I did the same thing for him back in Charlotte, and it cost us. He beat us. His car wouldn't start. So there's – there's uh, we all battle out there, and, and, you know, we're all trying to win. But there's there's some great people out there, and, and I like to point that out, that, uh, you know, he didn't have to wait for us. He did. Uh, it cost him that race, but in return, he got one back in Charlotte. So awesome stuff. And, you know, fines are going to come and go. So we're always pushing the limits, and, and that's just how it is. Mike, Tony mentioned that you know what it's like in the uh, pressure cooker situation, waiting to get through the oil down as a driver, but you definitely know it as a tuner. On the tuner side, what are you thinking? Like, hmm, man, I wonder if I get the heads off this thing and change the gasket or what or what lane am I going to go into? What's your thought process with one of those major oil downs or issues to the track, whatever it might be? Yeah, once you get up there, the engine's bolted together. You're up there in the staging lanes. Really, as far as adjusting the power, really the only thing you can do is you could speed the blower up or down um, or dump a little alcohol to knock – some of the nitro percentage down or add some timing, either add or subtract timing in the engine to adjust that. So there's not a whole lot you can do when you get up there. Um, so, um, and we have a formula for that. We go up there with X, try to have the same power every run we go up there. So that's kind of already set in play. We don't really vary that when we get up there. The, the guesswork or what, you know, what's going through my mind is, you know, the track conditions, the track temperatures, the track getting hotter, is it getting cooler? Um, you know, trying to keep up with that. Cause I mean, every time the track um, temperature goes up 10 degrees, we'll add say three grams of primary weight to the, to the race car, you know, to keep up with that. It's, it's that fine tuned, you know, give or take. So, I mean, you're up there that's cloudy and you're watching and the sun can pop out. That track could go up 10 degrees, 15 degrees in a matter of minutes. And now you could be over center or, you know, vice versa, not have enough. So then you're, you know, trying to adjust the tire pressure to make up for it. So that's really kind of, you know, the, the hard part up there is you're just trying to get set up for what the track conditions are. You know, and then also, you know, track um, lane lane choice, you know, if there's an oil down or maybe you see something on the starting line, one uh, lane has more rubber than the other on the starting line. You know, that's always, you know, something you're paying attention to also. But um, it's mainly uh, just, you know, you're you're trying to give it your best guess at what that um, what those track conditions are going to be and how you have the clutch set up. All right, I, I got to take it back here to the year that I graduated high school. So I'm I'm at not aging myself well too well. But for you, Mike, the drive one Ford with the I think it was like the grabber blue, yeah, uh, with the red wing. That like for me as a Ford guy, I remember telling my dad like we were in Pomona that year, and I was like, Dad, like I got to go to the races. Mm -hmm. because like this is the year i graduate and you that car for me like yeah i i didn't understand the red wing maybe you can you know tell me why it was red but i'm like dad like that's the car right there that's why i, I want a ford mustang right there yeah i'm a big ford fan myself always have been so yeah i always liked that car it was clean and simple um i'm not <laughs> why the uh the wing was red. I didn't design it. Um, I probably John Forrest probably had something to do with that. But yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I like that clean, simple Ford, Ford blue and white look. And the red gave it just a little pop. And um, yeah, that was definitely one of my, uh, you know, favorite 
favorite cars. It just was pretty simple and looked clean. You know, one of those sometimes less is more. So, and you want me to tell them what year that was? I don't want to blow your cover, but that was 2009. So it was, uh, I remember that year. Last of the O's. <laughs> that's all I can say. Last of the O's. Right, right. Yeah. Well, look, I mentioned an explosion. He's mentioning an old paint job. While we're here, because I know we are going to get it in the comment section eventually, Mike, why did you stop driving? What what in you said, hey, I'm good. I've done this. I'm going to go back to tuning. Why not in the driver's seat? Well, at the time, um, I was kind of... <clears throat> I mean, I kind of had had my fill of it and it was just kind of the um, just the kind of things that were what was happening there at John Force Racing where um, Brittany was, I believe Brittany was getting ready to drive and um, just the sponsorship and what we had going on. It just it just seemed like it was. It was the right time. Um, I had had two good years, 11 and 12. And um, I don't know. I was just, it just seemed like there was a couple of reasons that, you know, like I said, I just felt like it was time I had done it. I was, I felt satisfied and it did take its toll trying to tune it and drive it. I felt like I couldn't give the drive, pay attention to the driving as much as I should have. Um, and I just felt like it was, you know, just time to to just pull it back a notch. I felt like I could do a better job if I just concentrated on one thing rather than try to do both. And, you know, but for the most part, you know, I mean, I'm very thankful for John Force for giving me that opportunity. That was definitely the time of my life those two years um, after the whole time I drove. But, <clears throat> yeah, it was just it was just time, you know, and it's something, you know, I've got back in couple times here and there since then you know and everybody asks me all the time do you miss driving and and yeah I do um you know once in a while I mean that thrill there's nothing like it you know what that what that feeling's like that acceleration but um you know at the end of the day it's like I'm I'm just happy I got to do it and um you know I love the tuning like if I could do one or the other it's definitely the tune and to me that's that's the the tricky part and, and the real name of the game that keeps you thinking all the time. So that's, that's what I enjoy the most is the tuning. Tony, I had the privilege to sit at your table at the champions dinner at the Texas motorplex. That was a fun night. And there was a skag representative there. I, I, I fail to remember his name, but we got to talking about the product, the product on your top field dragster skag. And, I remarked that I saw some at St. Louis and I'm like, man, these, these are like Cadillac lawnmowers. And he mentioned that their whole philosophy is they want to sell you your last lawnmower period that right. you've ever got to purchase. So talk to us about the people that have partnered with you to go out and win races and potentially a championship because they certainly seem to thank themselves and put out a championship product. Well, yeah, they, they do, uh, they do a heck of a job making a product, but if you go on like skagnation.com, just look at what the people that have purchased one, uh, have lawnmower companies, <clears throat> what they say. And it's just, it's a, it's a, it's an incredible group of people. I mean, they just, they're great. They're from Wisconsin. So I, I kind of grew up in that neck of the woods and they make America made stuff. It's a great, great product. People rave about it. You know, and that was one of the things, you know, when I was trying to put a deal together, it took a long time. I said, I need something that's going to fill the shoes of the army. And this is not an easy task, but to fill something, to have something like Skag, an American based company that is building the best product out there, you know, simply the best is what they say. And that's exactly true. To be able to represent something like that is, uh, is fantastic. You know, it was a, it was a, a phone call that we made and for all the people out there that uh, have race cars trying to get into this thing and, and are trying to figure out, because I get asked all the time, how do you put a deal like that together? None of it was easy. It took years to do it. And it was the right place, right time, but sitting across from the right person who owned one of the seven distri distribution centers that said, you know, 
let me bring it up to the, the head of sales. And it went from there to, you know, to the head of marketing. And we took them for a tour of our shop. And our shop is a, an incredible shop. Uh, they went through it, did a tour and said, it's amazing how clean this place is. It's amazing how much alike we are in, in the way we do things. And it was, it was a blessing. You know, it turned out to be a great, a great fit. Now, Randy, the CEO, the first time he ever came to a race was in Norwalk, uh, Ohio. And before he had even seen the cars run, he said, I'd, I'd like to be on the car for the next three years uh, minimum. Let's put this together. And I don't want to be just one of four names on the car throughout the year. I want the whole deal. So it, it that's what a race car driver dreams of, you know, to have uh, a great company with a great product and, and employees that are behind you. Because there's 1,300 uh, dealers around the country that are all behind us now. So it's a big, big deal for us. Every race we show up at, there's a huge footprint. They bring out all the different different Skag mowers uh, right in the in in the infield of the, at the racetrack and uh, down the pit row. And they're everywhere. We've got one in the pit area. They use the the blowers, the leaf blowers, to blow off and clean the racetrack. So they really have jumped in with both feet. And it, it literally took a few races. For a few races, they hadn't even been to a race yet. They gave us, you know, basically half a season to see what happened. But the first time they showed up, and that is – that is such a great thing for the sport. It's such a great thing for potential sponsors out there looking at other cars and other teams. You got a big company with a lot of thousands of employees making hundreds of millions of dollars worth of product. And they came in the first time they were actually live at a race. They committed to a three-year uh, contract with no questions asked. They, they thought it was that great of a sport. Yeah, and talking about them, and they're even expanding and what they're doing. But I got to ask, Tony, you you have to call them and say, hey, I got this friend that lives in the great north. They get snow. They get dumped on all the time. Can you build that man like the ultimate snowblower, you know, snowblower and like drying system? Because like right now, we're, I mean, we're getting dumped on. I think we're supposed to get like 16 inches of snow like overnight. So like if you could talk to them. I can be, you know, the the test dummy for that one because if it can throw the snow and then like, you know, heat up the area so I don't have to go back every two hours, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, heated driveway works. <laughs> or Texas, just move to Texas. Yeah, move to Texas. Yes, there you go. <laughs> so, if if I stay here for the rest of my life, that is in the works because like, I I just yeah, wood burning stove and a heated driveway that I could just throw a bunch of wood in and it can, yeah, for sure. I love it. Great idea. So, and I got family in Texas, so it just depends on what part. Some days I like them and some days I want to be away from them. So it's a big That's state. That, it's a big <laughs> state. You can drive like 14 hours, to get away from them and still be in Texas. It's cool. Yeah. Big I mean, state. We'll, we'll see what Europe. happens. You know, like Texas is bigger than Europe. It's huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, so, gentlemen, uh, this photo came out when the announcement was made that Mike Neff was going to be back with Tony Schumacher. Look at these two sexy dudes ready with the new partnership to go in a NHRA Camping World Drag Racing and do great things. Mike, when you look at that photo, you've got this partnership now with Tony once again. Tony mentioned back in the day, didn't quite maybe to get to finish what was started. Where do you want to pick up and how far do you want it to go and where do you hope it does go? Yeah, I'm and and I felt the same way um, when, you know, 2018 ended. We were, you know, that was one of the biggest disappointments that I've had, you know, to see that go away because um, that was one of the most exciting years that I had. It was a new challenge and, you know, it was like something new. I'd been on funny cars for so long that, you know, it's just like spark, you know, a whole new, you know, life in me to be able to go and, and take that challenge on with the dragster and being with somebody like Tony, you know, eight time champion. I mean, it didn't, you know, the army, like it was, was like a dream come true. So when that went away, it was definitely a, a downer. So, you know, having the, the chance to, you know, rekindle that and get that going again is, you know, I'm, I'm all fired back up again. This is most excited I've been in a long time to go racing. So I think what my expectations are would be, you know, to 
you know, it might take a little time here early on just to kind of get things sorted out and get where we need to be. But I mean, certainly, I mean, my goal would be, you know, to be contenders, you know, to be able to compete for, you know, wins, win races, and hopefully, you know, be able to contend for the championships. That's the, that's the ultimate goal. And, and I believe that, you know, we have everything that we need to, uh, you know, put ourselves in a position position for that, hopefully. Okay. okay. Lee, it, it's common that we now hear this contenders. Um, you know, everyone's saying they just want to be a contender, but it just seems like, and, and this is for both of you guys, uh, we talked about it, you know, with a couple other guests, but every round is, you know, is hard in top fuel. I mean, Lee has alluded to top fuel being the most competitive class in NHRA drag race in this season. Uh, speak is. on, <laughs> speak on that. Like every round, you know, I'm going to use as a cliche, uh, Antron Brown saying it again, but every round is a final. The first round's a final. The second round's a final. The semi is a final, and if you get past the semi, then the semi is and the final is a final, and you just got to hold on. So for both of you guys, what does that mean? You know, you guys are getting the band back together. You guys are, you know, want to be competitive, but knowing that every round that you do is is you know a final round matchup. I think for me, it's uh, you have faith in each other, you know, and, and I think. You got to push it every time, and it's you know we we spend so much time talking about reaction time and start line, but these cars are very difficult to keep straight. And if you can keep a car straight, both tires on the track, you got a hundred percent of your tire on the track. Then Mike, you give it more clutch, get that thing to move quicker. If you're steering that car around and that car's got eighty percent tire on the track and it's moving, it's more difficult for the crew chief. So we 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 put faith in each other. He he trust that I can do my job. I trust that he does his job and we'll go out and we dominate. And that's just how the game's played. And it does take some learning. It was exciting for me to say, okay, we have an opportunity to, to have Mike come back. And, you know, when we started talking, it's like, we have a, the opportunity only started because Skag gave me a three-year deal because it's hard to get a crew chief with a, with a great, a great opportunity and say, look, we have a three-year deal. You just, Whatever happens, we got three years to build this thing minimum. And I think it, it's going to go much longer than that with Skag. So I think ultimately we'll put faith in each other. We'll do our job. And, and we got, we got it. You know, I mean, we know what we had. And it was a great thing, man. We literally, I think we got beat in the finals. We were low ET of the round, uh, got beat by Torrance on an, by two, three thousandths of a second. But we were running against a car that I think he won every race in the countdown he had dominated that time and we were right there with him. So um, it's going to be an F now what you're talking about with all those cars. I've never seen nothing like it. There was a time in 99 where there were 10 or 15 cars that ran good, but we hadn't seen that since there. We had Dixon years. We had definitely some of our years with the army car. Uh, you know, there's cars that Antron had a few years where you're just dominant, but now we're seeing, we don't know who's going to win the race. And I think that's what makes it so exciting. But for the fan who pays 60 bucks to come out and see a race, they want to get 60 bucks worth of excitement. And I think right now the best thing you could ever hear is when they come up and say, I feel like I owe more money. That was the best show I had seen, expected that in, in a long time. You guys are putting on a great show. So I feel we're doing a good job. NHRA is doing a good job. Uh, the teams have found some unity in, in the crew chiefs and, and, the, and the cars out there are running very similar. The cars are, uh, performing similar, and it's, it's it's hard to win a race. It, it's hard. I proved that last year. Well, to both of you, and I'll start with Mike. Don Moore wants to know the feelings on going back to Chicago, Route 66 race, Raceway. So, Mike, for you in particular as a tuner, what are some of the challenges, or is it all goody-goody two-shoe stuff at that place with as great as that track is for a tuner? And then, Tony, when Mike wraps up, uh, your thoughts on going back behind the, behind the wheel. Absolutely. Chicago is a great racetrack, and it's only – three hours from Indiana here where, where we live, which makes it nice. Everybody can just drive up there. Um, 
So, but yeah, it's a great facility, great racetrack. That was one of the premier tracks when they built that. So um, it was definitely disappointing when it went away. So I think everyone's excited to go back there. Um, I mean, there's been back in the day, I mean, that was like one of the tracks where you could set the national record there um, with the track surface and the conditions, you know, you run at night there. And um, it's definitely uh, one of the better um, facilities that we race at. So um, yeah, we're definitely looking forward to getting back back to Chicago. Yeah, I think <clears throat> I think Doug Coletta back a quarter mile ran 442 there. You know, it's a uh, it's where I grew up. I've put in a request with NHRA for about 2,000 free tickets already. But you know, it's it's it can be incredibly good, brutally hot. Really, I have to you know, depending on the time of the season. But it's a great place, man. I mean, it, Chicago's a stick and ball type town. So it was hard to get everyone out there to Joliet, but the track facility was built state of the art. It's beautiful. It looks like a, just a big horseshoe. Uh, the track conditions, uh, the track itself is great. And I actually enjoy all the people there. So, you know, I'm going to go back, see my friends it, again, like Zip said, it's close to our shop. So all of them will be able to bring their family out and the families don't get to come out. The, you know, the guys that work on the teams, the ones that, that uh, have family in Indianapolis, they'll be able to come out. So it'll be a great, great, great race. I'm looking forward to that hundred percent. So is there any, who has the juicier story? Lee, we, Lee, we've forgotten about this for a while. So we've gotten the nickname zip. But, Mike, you have to give us one of your best moments with Tony, something be, you know behind the scenes that no one knows about. Oh, man, that's <laughs> – I wish I could call Phil right now. <laughs> that's, yeah, mean, I'm sure he remembers something. He's got a lot better memory than I have. But, um, oh, nope. man, I don't know. We had a lot of good – I can't think of anything real – Crazy just, coming right off the top of my head, but we had we had a lot of laughs though. That that's for sure. The three of us. I, I'm a saint, man. You ain't gonna find no dirt on me. I mean, yeah, I, I can't really pull anything out right now. But but if I I'll, I'll let you know when I if I can come up with something. I'll find something tomorrow when I get to work. I'll talk to Phil. <laughs> Y'all do know the army did a background check, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it just depends on when they did that. I mean, yeah. you know, I I went through that background check myself. I mean, if you had a pulse and you can spell, <laughs> yeah. you can sign your name, you're pretty much good. I can spell most of it. That's why I shortened it to Sarge. Survivor's right. law. We got to say one more thing before we go. The, the, we got to thank the Mainers. We, we haven't talked about them at all, but Joe and Kathy and Joe Jr. and Eric and all the people that, I mean, Kim, everyone that came together and bought this team and, and put all these new parts and pieces together and uh, excited, not, not only to go race, but just for the excitement they have. It's really cool. Um, you know, they're out in Clarksville, Tennessee, and, just a gr just a great place, you know. You, I don't give enough credit, but you go off and you look at the stadiums and the you know the Maynard family stadiums. They they donate so much and they do so great. I'm I'm very excited to spend uh, the next bunch of years racing for them and uh, just a great partnership. It, it certainly is. Yeah, it's a great family. Great. The more you get to know them, um, great people, very giving, and their their excitement. Like Joe says, he's a fan, you know, and, and he's, you know, you can see the gleam in his eye and he's excited. Everything's new here. I was talking to him about, yeah, we're going to get ready. We're going to go test in, in um, Florida. And he's like, okay, cool. He goes, I haven't been to testing yet. So that sounds fun. You know, so to, you know, see somebody's new excitement, it's like bringing somebody to the racetrack for the first time, that excitement. So it's uh, definitely a whole different vibe over there and um, something I think we're all looking forward to. It's, it's good to have them aboard because, you know, Tony, with, with your dad 
you know, selling off properties, if you will, though there's still Don Schumacher racing. It's not dead. It's just different. It's not as many cars. There's still the factory stock operation. Anyway, people were like, oh, the drag racing sky is falling. And drag racing seems to always find a way to find people at the Mainers that are excited and invest. And from what I understand, their intentions are to do even more beyond just Tony Schumacher and Mike Neff and really impact the sport in a positive way. And they've already done that. And it's, it's refreshing to see people stepping up and helping the sport move forward. And they're definitely doing that. Yeah. I mean, and their, their comments that we want to bring the youth and really help them work up to their dreams. It's fantastic. I mean, uh, you know, the peak brothers were, were like that for me. You know, I, I, I was trying to find a job in, in a fuel car and they were looking for a driver and, and it was great. They just took this young kid that, had nothing to really offer. I had never driven a fuel car. Uh, so to bring me on and, and give me a chance, it was great. And that's what we're going to, we'll be working with drivers and watching them uh, do their thing and improve their talents. And just, a, just a class act. It's, it's really cool. And yeah, the, the world's always falling, you know, and, and uh, that's what people always say. The sky is falling in NHRA and they're, come on, man. We had Perdomes before. We had Garlis. We had Muldowney. We had Amato. We had Bernstein. Lots of guys, great people out there have come and gone. Awesome. They built the sport. My time will come and go too. But but there's always new people coming in, and I think it's because it's a great sport. It's an exciting sport. Uh, I feel like it's getting I – mean, we had some great crowds last year. They weren't all jam-packed, but we had some where you sat in that car looking up and thought, man, there's a lot of people, and I'm glad to be back doing it because we had a couple of years – just a few years back where there just wasn't anybody in those stands due to COVID and all the other stuff. And it was, it was frightening for a guy who loves drag racing. who thinks it's the greatest sport in the world. And we were a bit nervous back in, in that day. Well, uh, gentlemen, look, last question. Uh, we'll let you go. Thank you for your time tonight. It is off season. We're past PRI. We're looking forward to a new season. What beyond drag racing in the off season are you going to do? Hobby, vacation, whatever it might be. Mike, what's on the docket, man? Um, I'm heading to uh, Oceanside. We have we stay down in Oceanside at the beach for um, the last part of December and over Christmas. I'm from California. My mom's still out there. My brother and um, I've got an off-road truck that I race out there. So um, I always look forward to this time, get a few weeks off, go out there, hang out by the beach. Go, you know, my kids, everybody will come out and we'll hang out there. We're going to go run my truck a couple days up in the desert and see my family and um, hopefully enjoy some warm weather. More than anything. Um Hammett, California, which is southern over yep. by Temecula. I'm from San Diego, so okay. All right. Well, yeah. where, where, yeah. how come you left San Diego? <laughs> we won't get into that. that, had to be, that had to be um, <laughs> yeah. Clearly that, bad decisions. <laughs> yeah. No, um, yeah. Military, and then I moved up here to North Dakota, but uh that's been 12 years now, but yeah, I mean, so dad actually worked in the, you know, Oceanside Temecula area at the family Toyota right there off okay. the highway. So I'm familiar. I actually, that's my first rollover story. I, we, uh, hide, I don't want to say we hijacked, but we took the golf court that they used to take people around in. And you come, if you're looking at the Toyota Center that's right off the highway, you come off of the top lot and there's yeah. just this this down ramp and there's a speed bump at the end of it. And we took the speed bump and tried to turn and yeah, rode the uh, courtesy golf cart. Yeah. Probably didn't go over so, too well, did it? Well, actually it was perfect because the, like the store owner, his son was my age. Oh. So it was him and I. And so I just said he was driving. So it was, it was good. <laughs> Got yeah. away with one there. Yeah, I was told I was never allowed to drive the golf cart again. So <laughs> right, was... right, 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 right. <laughs> well, That's Tony, funny. I hope you're not driving any golf carts uh, here in this off season. What about you? What what R and R do you got planned? Actually, we took a trip to Cancun. We never finished our honeymoon because we got married, kind of raced, you know, middle of that stuff, and 
went to Cancun, came back home. Uh, my wife had carpal tunnel surgery, and then we go back to Cancun on Saturday with the kids. We haven't, you know, been been on a vacation as a whole group, and I can't even remember five years, maybe. So looking forward to that. Just a quick little one, knowing that the season will get started, and, and uh, it's going to be hectic, man. You know, it's it, these these are once you leave, you're kind of gone till November. You come home and you're, you bounce around, but you're still living out of a suitcase. So um, looking forward to this little trip. I'm going to get – I'm working on stretching my back and getting – getting these cars kind of crush you, you know. I mean, over the course of a year, you come out, you gotta, you got to go visit your chiropractor and get stretched a little bit, um, get, get all the stuff that makes a, a 53-year-old guy look like a 20-year-old kid again, you know. And then uh, we'll go back out and – Get started, man. Got to have those eyes, right? Got to, got to scare the, the people I'm racing. So if I can suggest anything, because I have a bad back, thank you, U.S. military, but and and triple jump and track, but <laughs> you have to try chirotherapy. You know those ice chambers? Absolutely. Like I was like acupuncture, massages, chiropractors, everything, and like I'm seriously thinking about investing in like that industry because I did that three times this year. And like you go in there and for those three minutes, obviously I live in North Dakota, so it's not that cold to me, but I'm telling you guys right now, like if you haven't tried that, that, and then go and get your feet done, go to the nail salon and get your feet done. Cause Oh, relaxing. <laughs> Lee, say what you want, Lee, take, take my man card, whatever. But, <laughs> Lee, it feels, on, it feels you, amazing. You, you've been there, Lee. Come on. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this man can't handle his meat at a Brazilian steakhouse. So I don't listen. Okay. <laughs> it's the bottom bacon that gets you. Like, that's right. So we that's went right. to – you guys have been to a Brazilian steakhouse, right? Mm -hmm. They keep – so we're in Vegas. What was that, two years ago now? Two they just ago. kept bringing it out, and I'm like, yeah, I'll, t I'll take a piece. Yeah, I'll take a piece. So the next day – we're standing at the track and it's, I don't know, 90 degrees in Vegas. And I look at, uh, I look at Lee and I go, man, I got the meat sweats. Like I need to go sit down and drink water. Like <laughs> Texas day, Brazil, right? We, we no? went to uh Fogo de, Fogo de Chao. Chao. Fogo de Chao. Yes. 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 Highly yeah. recommend that. Yeah. Highly That's recommend good. that. Good. The bottom but not, bacon. But not too much. Got it. <laughs> not too much. Well, gentlemen, look, Thank you for the time and all of the success to you two partnering back up and moving forward in NHRA drag racing. Definitely look forward to good things out of the Maynard family SCAG power equipment, top fuel dragster team. Y'all keep up the good work. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Pleasure you, talking to you. Eat Audio. some Mexican food for me, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the place, right? Oh yeah. Competition Products, your source for hardcore engine parts for street, strip, and oval track. Our free catalog is packed with hundreds of product lines from the best-known manufacturers in the performance industry. Lowest prices guaranteed. Free shipping and handling on all orders over $149 in the continental U.S. Need expert advice? Our knowledgeable staff is just a phone call away. Competition Products. Race parts sold by racers since Classic car owners, make your headlights over twice as bright with Holly Retrobright LED headlights. A plug-in replacement for those dim halogen seal beams, Retrobright maintains that classic look and lasts six times longer. Stay safe and click the link below to learn more. All right. Hey, very cool to hear from uh, Mike Neff. And actually kind of the first time I ever got to talk to him. I've seen him at the track, but it's always testing or something and it, He'll probably always remember this, the guy who brought up the explosion, sadly, to, to kick it off. <laughs> Don't, like I said, uh, remember him from the, like I said, that that 2009, man. Hey, that, he had some strong schemes dude, dude, in his time in the car. Dude. I love the Old Spice one. The Old Spice one was solid. It was simple, red and white. And he's got the another. Castro. The, the Castro, but the, then the orange drive. The orange and like blue. Yeah, that the orange and blue, blue set. Yes, that was a solid one too. And it, he has some, some good-looking schemes. It was like three different oranges, but it was like an orange on top of an orange with like a yellow flame. Yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking. Like, yeah, dude, isn't it? Isn't it crazy how like sometimes we get these names and you're like, 
hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then it clicks all of a sudden. You're like, that's okay. Now I know exactly who. So it's weird. I mean, thanks to Elon Warner and to Bobby Bennett. Bobby, get well. You, I, I'm telling you, you have the PRI plague. A um, couple of hot toddies and some lemon and honey every day makes it just right. It cures the PRI plague. To anyone that's out there, you feel you guys are saying I'm congested. I'm not. I'm just like I said, new microphone, everything. I feel great, but that is the cure to the PRI plague. Honey, lemon, and hot water. And if you can put some whiskey in there, do that. Clears all that sinus and congestion from being inside and then outside where it's cold and back inside. Yeah. Lee, yeah. there was another hey, announcement that we didn't got, talk about. I got to give a shout out since we're talking about people feel better. Mom, you're out there watching, get feeling better. Yes, she had a better. knee surgery today and it went well and, and knee replacement and get to pick her up tomorrow, take her home, but get better. Mom. Yes. Announcement. Factory X. Yes. We got to car, see a car. Car looks good. Killer. You, hey, you know what it looks like? What? A Challenger. Oh my goodness. Surprise. Yeah, no, definitely nice to finally hear some inklings about what is actually going on and, and you know, the behind the scenes. And like you said, I think in HRA, the stage with Brian Loans, they did, they did an awesome job from, you know, start to finish. They had the stage rolling. There was announcements. Brian and Tony uh, worked their butts off again because it and, and not not only just, you know, the whole staff there, and I don't know everybody's name, but Brian, you got Tony, you got my man Warren Evans on the stream there all day hitting the ones and the twos, and you have them from like nine to five, just interview, 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 absolutely uh, insane and great work, uh, Brian, Tony, uh, Warren, everyone involved. Oh, yeah, I mean – that that whole production i mean from the time you walk in there you know from the time to the time you leave there's someone on the stage there's there's no downtime and if there is they're interacting with people there's always a crowd like if you're walking down the hallways it's like it's bottlenecked right there i mean it is there's always people standing around seeing and and it's just great to you know be able to broadcast and to get a lot of insight look into what's going on while these drivers crew chiefs owners are there right and you know talking about shows i want to plug and i got to plug scott performance wires they gave me a place to do my between the slicks live each day and dude they did me right like i had two director chairs and a little center thing and a big logo behind me it was professional it looked good made me look good so scott performance wires ladies and gentlemen Ooh. you need wires for your project no matter what it is you seriously need to look at them but they supply the wires for john porsche racing there's a lot of high-end wires that are actually private label done by them they apparently have the best out there when it comes to wires look them up i actually stopped over there and got to chat with them because, you know, like I said, I've kind of just been itching at, you know, getting getting the car back done. So I got a chance to talk to them about my coil wires, um, heard it on your show. So then I went over and stopped and talked with them about that and uh, kind of you know, we'll be emailing back and forth. But then I got to uh, give a plug to Weldon. Um, looking at a new fuel pump for the car. So shout out Ooh. to Weldon. I mean, yeah, I mean, hey. you know, it, you, when you put it on, you, you got you got to snap, snap, and tag, tag, you know? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, like I said, I mean, the list has been made. Um, you know, my my trip home Friday was spent making the list. Okay, I talked to this person. I got to remember this. I got to remember that. And it's just cool just to, you know, be able to be associated with it, be able to be a part of it every year. So I'm trying to think of any other annou big announcements that um, – we well, I think, and we can't release too many details. We don't have all the details, but it's, I think something that was big was that which was not announced. And if you go look at the NHRA schedule, if you can find it, find a photo 
on a particular day, there was an announcement to be made, but then that was taken off. So there's something still in the Nitro ranks to be worked out. And it would be a major deal if it does come to conclusion. I'm going to have to go back and look because I took a picture of it, I, th I think. Go back and look, people. Go back and look. But, Sam, look, major announcements from Drag Illustrated and the World Series of Pro Mod to Buddy Hole Racing to uh, you have Factory X. You have so much for the sport being announced at PRI, and I think that is a great place to do it, by the way. And we're looking forward to another great series, a great season in NHRA Drag Racing. It's going to be spectacular. And I think we're going to continue to hear plenty more through the off season in the silly season news leading into the season. I don't have the picture that I'm looking for. Ah, man. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm trying to now. I'm trying to think of what because I downloaded some pictures, so now I have to. You make me think, Lee. Lee, you know what I can tell you? The big announcement was what's that? We talked about it. The dancing robot. I just want. I had to give you crap. I'm sorry. I I had to say at least one more time. Dancing robot. Hey, it was cool. I will. I was. It was cool. I want one at my party now. Well, yeah, now, I mean, I can't, I guess I can't do it for you because now you owe me a favor um, since I paid the favor f forward uh, <laughs> Thursday night. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, I did. Oh, man. So I forced this man to buy me one of my drinks. I could walk up to him and I said, I think it's your time to buy with all the crap you put me through. And he, hey, he bought me a drink. So thanks, Sam. I appreciate that. No, he goes, I think for all the stuff that I have to put up with you in this show, you owe me a drink. <laughs> Meanwhile, against my better judgment, everyone, since I'm such a nice person to Lee and he bullies me all the time, again, oh, right. I got bu I got bullied into this. And, yeah. And well. then he proceeded to leave very early. I did leave early, yes. I did not do what I did last year. In no way, shape, or form, or fashion. I saw the robot, and I was like, I've seen it. There's nothing. What, what else is there to see? <laughs> I, I just, I get a laugh out of West Block. I mean, the great, one of the coolest guys in Drag Race. Somebody goes, is it even a party if you don't have a robot at your party? Not like, now. That's, not, that's true. Not like, like, okay, so last, last year, year it was the fluorescent. Last year, I'm like, you know, go go girls come out. I'm like, okay, we're clubbing, we're clubbing. And then now it's like go go girls and a robot. I'm like, what what's going to happen? Now? Are we going to do burnouts on Club Envy floor next year? I mean, what's going to happen? Uh, they've already beat that. They had the uh, jet car in front of the old club that it was in. So, uh, you know, I heard that story. I heard that story. Yeah. I was actually there. Good times, good times. PRI was good. This show was good. You all out there, you're good. Hit the like button. Hit the share button on the way out. Sam, I'm done. I'm man. a dude. As Good Burger would say, I'm a dude. He's a dude. We're all dudes. Hey, you guys have a good one. Stay safe. Keep the pedal to the metal. God bless. And we will see you at a drag strip or on a podcast very, very soon. I'm Slam and Sam. That's the morning. Monday morning racer, Lee Craft, and we out. Peace. Peace.